So I had another idea last night. What if I take an amplifier that I don't particularly care for? What if I try to make that one sound like one of my favorite amps? Taking a Crown drive core. I did this review early on in the channel. Very powerful, 215 watts into eight ohms, 350 watts into four, and then you can also bridge it four ohm bridge to 1100 watts, eight ohm bridge into 700 watts, okay? I thought this thing was a little bit dry. We're gonna try to make it a little bit warm, lush, a little more like what the cheap audio man likes. So, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's make this thing become my favorite amp. If you're not familiar with these Crown drive core amps, they, if you go to some forums that talk about them, very powerful, pro audio though. So you would see these probably up on stage when people are doing performances, maybe in some type of recording studio, something like that. But if you look at the back, you'll see input connections over here are XLR and RCA. So this will, run balance and there's also trs connections here too which uh you know speaks to the pro audio lineage of this not very heavy i think this is 11.5 pounds here hold on all right one-handed okay yeah it's 11 11 pounds One can do a high pass filter, and a high pass filter is nothing more than taking away the bass frequencies from your front speakers or from whatever speaker is connected to this. Ooh. You can also do a band pass filter, and what a band pass filter is, kind of like it sounds, is taking a band of the frequency response, getting rid of the top and getting rid of the bottom, so you just have the middle stuff. So for whatever reason, if you just wanted the mid-range going to your speakers, you can do that with the drive core. I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this up, get it going, hook it up to the speakers, and I try to do this as real time as I can so that I can talk about what I'm hearing as I'm hearing it. So I'm gonna use the uh, SMSL SU9N. Pretty good DAC here. It's got balanced outputs. So if I want to, I can go balanced from this into the crown. Also has single-ended uh, output, but most importantly, has variable volumes. Now I can control the volume from here with a remote control. And I just so happen to have about 35 of these hanging around. So let me hook this up. I think I'll hook this up via USB from my computer to get it going. I have some short uh, XLR cables. So I'm going to use those, not really because I care about balanced, really, but because they're short and I'm not going to get them tangled up everywhere. This is an amplifier, so there's no volume control. There's a gain, but that's not volume control. So I'm going to turn this way, 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 way down. It's working! One other really cool feature about this crown amp is it has a clipping indicator. Right here is the signal, I guess, level. So it's very reminiscent of an old school LED. So as the bass hits, as the music hits, uh, it's gonna go up. You can kind of figure out uh, just where clipping is gonna occur just with this amp alone. Let's give it a little bit more listen. Actually, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound as bad as I remembered it sounding. Wow, wonders never cease. So we had a saying in the Navy, it's called 50-50-90, which means if you had two choices, you had a 50% chance of being right, but 90% of the time, you were wrong. However, it seems like I was in the 10% this time. At 50-50-90, I got about getting the speaker uh, cables right, and I got them right. So I'm gonna listen to some songs that I know pretty well. I've got the ELAC Unify 2.0s on here. I'll play a few songs, kind of get to know this amp a little bit better, and then we're going to try to jazz it up a bit. Get it sounding real warm and yummy. That was sad but true. You can't listen to it. I'm going to have to cut it out so that you can't uh, hear it. Otherwise, I'll get a copyright strike. The bass is actually 
thicker and more present than I thought, than I remembered it being. I do, however, remember some of the, the treble. I don't know how to explain it. Seeming a, just a little bit fake. Artificial treble. So I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna fix that. Shit. Locius, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six band EQ. Also has balanced outputs, balanced inputs, uh, single-ended RCA input and output. Traditionally, how you use an equalizer is you take the source and then you put this in between and then the amp. So source into EQ into amp. Now these used to be used on receivers, vintage receivers. And anybody could put them on a vintage receiver because you could use the tape loop. Record out into the EQ, EQ out in, back into the amp. They're more difficult to add to a system now because you need to make sure that you have a separate source and a separate amp. So if you have an integrated amp, chances are you're not gonna be able to put an EQ in there. In some rare instances, an integrated amp will actually have a main in. So in that respect, and a preamp out, in that respect, you could put an EQ. Those amps are pretty rare. I do have the Locius working with the XLRs. There is a bypass switch right here. This bypass, when it is up, means that this, whatever you set this to, is engaged. So what one can do is when they set their EQ, if they want to hear what it sounds like flat without EQ, just go down here and it bypasses it. Skit doesn't really have any frequencies labeled as far as what they are. And I kind of like that. By having just low, medium, low, medium, high, medium, high, 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 it doesn't really matter, right? You start dialing the music into the way that you want to hear it. That's what I'm gonna do. Started messing around with this thing. And the medium high, this is actually where the, the sibilance area lies on this EQ. I am backing this down a little bit because it was a little hot right there. This seems to be, if I'm guessing, this is probably around 10K because when I bring this up, it's not fatiguing, it's just more clarity with the cymbals. Upper bass up a little bit more than the lower bass. And lower bass, I've just, just got a titch. Right there. The thing about this is there's not a lot of swing, so this isn't super heavy handed with the way you um, dial things in. I used to have EQs, if you'd bump them, there would be a big difference. With the Schiet Locius, you can get a pretty good swing to kind of really dial things in. The other cool thing is that none of this is being done in the DSP region. And some people may say this is a huge negative, that you should not adjust things in the analog domain, even though they did it for decades and everybody had an EQ and actually it was very desirable to have an EQ because not all speakers sound the same. Not all amps sound the same. Schkit has actually doubled down. So not only do they have the Loki and the Lokius, now they have a big, huge EQ. I want to use it, but it's like $1,500. I think the Lokius is 299, not terrible. It changes depending upon the level that you're listening to. I talked about it a little bit in my last video about the Yamaha. I don't have it up. I, this is my vintage Yamaha. Anyway, Yamaha, the vintage and the newer one has a variable loudness control. And what that does is depending upon the level, our hearing changes. So loudness control, really what it did was it boosts the lows and it boosts the highs, but it does that when you're listening at lower volumes. As the volume increases to more of a reference level, our hearing starts to change. So our hearing is always keyed in on dialogue and that makes sense because, well, as a species, we've probably used communication to survive. Hey, there's a tiger over there. Hey, that giant crocodile pterodactyl thing is coming to eat you move out the way. So it makes sense that we hear dialogue pretty well. Uh, bass and treble though, we don't hear as well at lower volumes. So an EQ is really only good at whatever volume or levels you set it at. It's gonna change as you go down. Keep in mind, 
that depending upon what level you're listening at, that EQ that you just set at a specific level is gonna sound a little bit different as the volume goes up, the volume goes down, etc. I generally listen around 75 dB, give or take. 75 to 85, 85 is generally as loud as I'll go. So a lot of these amplifiers that I may not like, particularly maybe because they don't sound great at 75 dB. At 75 dB, the old cheap audio man might need a little bit more bass, a little bit more sparkle, may need a loudness button. And since many amplifiers, most new, recent, current amplifiers do not have a loudness control, maybe that's why I like EQ so much because I'm making my own loudness control with either tone controls, more importantly, with the Lokius because I ended up probably plus two on the lower uh, bass, plus one on the upper bass, minus one on the lower mid-range, flat on the mid-range, minus one uh, in the upper mid-range, and then probably plus three on the treble. And that's where I got the crown to start sounding really yummy to me. It's gonna depend upon your amp. I'm not here to tell you what you should like uh, from a sound signature perspective. But for me, I just got this crown drive core that has a ton of functionality to sound, not like I like it to sound. But remember, you start messing around with levels, you start to do wide swings and levels, that EQ that you just set is gonna start to sound different. Get to know yourself, get to know what levels you like, and then set your EQ at the levels that you spend the most time in. I spend the most time in 75 to 85. Actually, probably 70 to 80 is really where I probably spend most of my time. And then listen to a song that you know very, very, very well. I start to change each frequency individually. So leave all the other ones at noon pointing straight up and then start to just dial it in. Start to listen in your music what that's adjusting because I have done this a few times and this was adjusting things I thought it shouldn't be adjusting. So everything was kind of skewed one to the right. But once I figured that out, I got it sounding exactly the way I wanted it to sound. EQs are fun. I think EQs are poo-pooed on by some audiophiles. Not all, but some audiophiles. Some audiophiles poo-poo on tone controls of all things. Not all amps sound the same. Not all amps sound the same on a specific speaker. Kind of begs the question, well, if we had them back then, why don't we have them now? Because, well, you don't need them. Well, okay, well, what if I'm listening at 60 dB? Do I still not need the loudness button? What if I'm listening at 75 dB? Saying people don't need tone controls is short-sighted because that's not how our hearing works. An amp is not gonna sound exactly the same as far as bass, mid-range, and treble at 60 dB as it is at 75 dB. Get an EQ if you want an EQ. I guess that's the big takeaway. Get an EQ if you wanna get an EQ because I can take this pro amplifier that's got gobs of power, dial it in just like I like it. And you can use this as a high-pass filter. So you can use this amp for a lot of things. That's it today, kind of a fun video. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash man. Every Sunday night, we have patron-only Zooms. We also have a patron-only Facebook group and Discord server. And I do giveaways for specific tiers. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal Music. Link's in the description. Click on the link, sign up. Even if it's for a trial and you quit, I'll still get a couple of bucks. And also use the affiliate links. I do not have an affiliate link with Shkit. You can also use the thanks button. Uh, it's down below by the share button. It's a heart with a money sign through it. Click on it. You can give me a couple of bucks, buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, so don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Think about buying an EQ and turning your amp to sound however you want it to sound at any given volume. And fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Mm -hmm.